awesome because we are baptizing people. So, have a little bit of excitement this morning. Uh, I've got a guest here on the stage with me. It's pretty quiet, um, but very important person. Uh, it's going to be part of the message. We're in a series called First Things First, and I'm just really excited about the series. It, it's To me, it's been um, just a refreshing way to just look at our walk with God. Because it's so important for us to, to think about what He considers important. You know, if we want to say, if we want to say we're followers of Jesus, we have to like look at what He says is important. So when we started into this series on first things first, it's not just an order of what's first. It's not like first, second, third, that kind of thing. It's literally like when you say, I put this first, I put this, this is most important. This is, this is, um, something that I value higher than other values. So we have been going through and looking at things, and I've just really been encouraged, and, and it's like I said, I've been a fresh breath of life as we've gone through this series. This morning, the passage that's on your bulletin that we're going to read will also be later in the sermon, and kids, it's not on your page. But if you're sitting next to someone they have a bulletin. You can read along, or it'll be up here if you want to read along, okay? And it's found in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. I'm going to be living from, living, reading from the New Living Translation. I'm going to live in the Living Translation. That's how the Living Translation should be. Just live it, right? Okay, the New Living Translation, I'm going to be reading from it, um, and it's just it's such a beautiful passage. Let's, let's look at this here. It says, uh, for once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light, for this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Let's pray. Father, we know that it's your hearts, that it's our hearts that you want, God. It's, it's, you're, not, you're not really worried about our abilities. You're not really worried about how tall we are or how young or old we are where we've been or what we've done. It's our hearts that you want. And so God, this morning as we look at this and as we look at this connection between where our hearts are and the actions that flow from it and and what happens when you put your light into us, God, God, I pray that we wouldn't lose track, God, that we wouldn't become overly focused on, on works, but God, we would see how this connection actually is supposed to be, God, between you putting your light into us and it coming forth in, in to the actions and the, the things that we do and the things that we say and where we go and all this. And God, I pray that you would help every young person and every person who's not so young to just be able to receive the things you have for them this morning, including me. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So there's something that we do at our Awana meeting um, when we have something really big to announce, we, we make a drum roll, okay? All right, so I don't know if the kids can get me a drum roll going. There you go. Bringing it up. There we go. And today's sermon is called First Responders. First Responders. All right, so I was really like booting around because I've been playing with the words because I've been loving the words first and, you know, first um, beginning, things like that, because it ties in with the series. And, and to be quite honest, you know, naming things is fun, but it's more important what's in them, right? And so as I was really looking at like this name, and I was like, first responders, and, and I was thinking like, what imagery does that pull up in our mind, you know? And one of them is, is like literally the first person to get there, right? Like the first responder is the first person to get there. And so I want to tell you that's not really where I was going, okay? So if, if that's the first thing that popped in your head, just give it a little boot, kick it out. And, and think about something different. It's similar, but different. And what it was is that first responders and, and people in fire and rescue have, have this, this special um, thing about them. I, I don't even know if you want to call it a thing, but it's a, there's a special um, understanding with people in fire and rescue. And, and I've heard it quoted many times. We, we heard it a lot after the, the, the tragedy of 9-11, um, but I think it's become a given understanding, I think you can agree with me, is that they're the people who are running in when everyone else is running out. They're going the different direction. They're going towards the hardship, not away from it. 
They're going towards the danger and not away from it because they made a decision to respond to the need. Can, can we agree with that, that that's, that's a good image of a first responder? And, and we have some, some sorry, whew, we have some firefighters and um, maybe some um, that have retired from, from first response or medical. If you have served presently or have served in the past as a first responder, a firefighter, uh, in, in, in the, the medical field, whether it is in the um, military or, or civilian, if you are in law enforcement and you've served in those capacities, could you just stand up for a second? Can we, just, can we just thank God? We're not just thanking you. We're thanking God for what you've done. So if you've done that or are doing it, can you stand up? Come on. Come on. Amen. Hey, I just want to tell you that there are people alive today to receive the gospel because of you. Don't overlook the importance of that. Jesus gave his life for the people that you saved their life so that they could have another day to receive the gospel or to live it out for other people. So do not think lightly of what you have done, okay? Um, so, whew, that's awesome. I'm so blessed. I didn't know I was going to get so emotional with that, so I'm trying to move on here. Okay, so I, I did invite a guest who's actually breathing besides C4 here. Um, C4 is a, a, a great guest, but I actually invited the person that C4 belongs to to come up. And so Sam, if you want to make your way up. Um, I had this, this crazy idea when I was on the plane yesterday. And uh, thank God for Wi-Fi that works in the air. Like, I'm just so blown away with technology. I got a mic for you. So when I ask you questions, you don't have to like mime it. He's not the greatest mime, not the greatest mime. Um, but yeah, so I, I had this idea yesterday. I messaged Sam and I was like, Sam, could you get us a firefighter suit? And he's like, yes, I can. What are we doing? <laughs> I love his, see right there, first response. He's like, is the church on fire? <laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm in a plane. Is the plane on fire? No, it didn't happen like that. But um, he was ready to respond and ready to come, and uh, he brought the suit in, and we're going to do something cool with it, kids. We're going to do something cool with the suit here in just a minute. Um, but, but before we do, I kind of want to just clear up a couple other things, because they're going to be important to our message, first responders. And, and a couple questions for Sam before he helps. He, we're actually going to put the suit on somebody besides him. Um, so we're gonna, someone's going to get fully suited up. It's going to be pretty cool, um, and uh, it's going to be really hot and sweaty for them. Sorry, Sam, your suit might get a little sweaty. Uh, but... Uh, but before we do, and before we get any further in this, I just want to clear up a couple of things with, with Sam and with all of us, for all of us. Can you see him on the screen? Does he need to get a little closer to me? Right there. Okay, perfect. Freeze. There you go. All right. Um, so Sam, what do you think was like one of the most influential reasons for you, or what, what influenced you the most to choose to get into fire and rescue? Um, the first one... Uh, which was a part, but not the biggest part, would be my dad. Um, but then moving on past that, it's uh, every day that I go to work, even now, I get to do something that impacts somebody's life in a positive way, um, and not just my own. Every day I go to work, and I'm doing something for somebody else. And so I like that. That's awesome. Great answer. I didn't actually know what his answer was, so I'm really glad it was good. <laughs> He'd have been like, they've got a great retirement plan. I've been like, well, I can morph that into heaven. We can work with that. Uh, <laughs> two weeks on, two weeks on. No, okay, this isn't helping me, Sam. Um, but no, it was a great answer because he's working. He, you know, he's, it's a cause that's bigger than him. And, and, and so what we're going to be doing today, young people and not so young people, uh, is that we're going to be just really looking at the parallels between choosing to follow Christ. We're going to baptize some people, which is part of their, their commitment to Christ. But uh, we're going to be just trying to look at this parallel between choosing and being a first responder and, or in fire and rescue and choosing to respond to the call of God, okay? Um, so one more question, and, uh, and that is, um, what do you feel like, Sam, is like, like if there was one critical indicator to whether someone was going to actually become part of the fire and rescue team in whatever capacity, because there's all kinds of capacities from 911 operators to, okay, not just talking about field firemen, but um, what is the, the one like critical indicator whether they're actually going to become it or whether they're just going to like talk about it? Um, it's probably just that habit of putting yourself in a position, in a hard position, and uh, striving to do that well. 
You always want to do the hard thing, and you want to do the hard thing to the best of your ability. So you're saying that they actually have to decide that they're going to complete this hard thing. Like, if they don't make that decision, if they're just, like, kind of enthused... Have you seen... Because you've been... You know, you, you, you entered into training with some other people. Were there some people that didn't make it through training? Sure, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that find out that it's not just about being there. It's once you're there, you have to decide to, to go in, to bring somebody out, to see it all the way through. And some people don't want to do that, don't, aren't able to do that, and other people can. And that's, that's really what the difference is. You know, lots of people can lift a ladder, carry hose, climb, walk, run, but... It's what you're climbing, walking, running into. Gotcha. What about like, like, have you ever been surprised like with people that when you saw them, like you looked at them coming into to training and you said, I don't really see that person ever suiting up. Were you, have you been surprised a few times at people who have made it through or have you heard testimony of that? I know you're, you're a little bit younger than me, so you, know, you haven't been around quite as long, but have you heard and seen that like in your experience, like there's people that... Like, you didn't think they had what it takes, but because they made the decision, they figured out how to make it happen? Yeah, I uh, worked with a girl for two years who was younger than me and is half my size, and any day of the week she'll pick me up and put, her on her, put me on her back and walk me out of somewhere. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's, that's impressive. Okay, I think I'm done questioning, Sam. You're going to stand by. If you want to have a chair or whatever, I'm going to get someone up here in just a minute. We're going to start suiting them up. Um, so, uh, kids out there, younger people, I'm going to, it's not, can't be a little person or we won't even see you. You'll just be a lump with a helmet on top, right? Um, so I'm going to be, I'm going to be looking for someone, but that volunteer has to do kind of in a smaller sense, what Sam just said, you've got to stick it out. No matter how heavy the suit is, no matter how sweaty it is, no matter how heavy the helmet is, you're not going to stop. You're going to stay up here. You're going to wear the suit until we take it off of you. So be thinking about that, kids, if you're really willing. And we're going to jump through a couple points on the message here. So the first point on the message is a response requires decision. So response requires decision. So if we're going to respond to the call of God, we have to make a decision. It's not something that you, you can just kind of feel your way into. You're like, you know, one day I just woke up and I was a Christian. No, it doesn't really work like that. You know, young people, especially young people that have been growing up in a Christian home, you need to make sure, you need to make sure that you can point at the, the time in your life where you said, I decided to follow Jesus. It's not your parents' faith. It's not your family's faith. It's not a heritage. It's not something that you just, I guess I've always been a Christian. No, you haven't. The only person who's always been a Christian is Jesus, okay? <laughs> and he always has been from before time existed, and he always will be because he is Christ, okay? He is the Christ. But the rest of us have to have a place where we decide to follow Jesus. Your parents can't decide for you, you can't inherit it, and you can't stumble your way into it. There's things in life that you can stumble your way into. Most of them aren't that great. Um, but <laughs> but the, you can stumble your way into certain things. You can kind of kind of like... Even like acquire, I'll use that term to make it move away from negative context. You can acquire certain things, you know, like, oh, I just kind of picked it up a little at a time. But people in this group, they don't just like, you know, well, you know, I was wandering by the fire station one day. And next thing I know, I was wearing a helmet and I didn't wear it for long. And then, you know, a couple weeks later, you know, I was out on fire. That's not how it works. They have to decide, I want to do this. Now, I'm going to make that decision. And when they decide that they're going to do it, like Sam said, that's the main, that is the main indicator to whether they're actually going to ever serve is when they make a decision. And there's no difference with Christianity. We have to decide to follow Jesus. We have to decide to trust Him for our salvation. It's all decision. And God has been bringing people to decisions since the beginning of people. Think about the story of Abraham. Abraham, I want you to follow me. I want you to go to a place that's not your own. Think about all these different times. Moses, you know, Moses, I want you to go back to where you fled from. You know, he's been saying, hey, follow me. I, I want you. I want you. I'm calling to you. And I was thinking about all those, and I, and I was remembering the passage from Isaiah. Some of you will be really familiar with it. And I'm going to move through the, the passage a little out of order because I wanted to do this verse first. But we'll be reading several verses from Isaiah chapter 6. And the first one I want to read 
is Isaiah 6, 8. And this is what it says. It says, Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom shall I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? I said, Here I am. Send me. You see, Isaiah had to decide to say yes. He had to make a decision that I will go. And if you don't make that decision, you never... You, you, you can't just accidentally find yourself doing it. All right, the next one. Well, we better get someone up here getting suited up. Hmm. I, the, the first hand I saw, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Sorry, yeah, come on up, come on up. First hand. I happen to be looking that way. Sorry, people on the other side of the room. I don't know why. A lot of times because I look at the camera. wasn't intentional. All right, you're going to get suited up. You guys can take it all off there. I'll warn you that I strapped the... the tucked the suspenders into themselves. So he's going to get her suited up just like he gets suited up. So that'll be going on kind of behind me, around me. Kids, it's okay to, to, to watch. Try not to giggle out loud if she's having trouble getting it on. She's going to... All right. So the next point that I would have here is that response requires repentance. Now, several weeks ago, we talked about repentance and sometimes in our modern culture, how we struggle with the term repentance because for us, the word repentance is always like, like um, saying I'm sorry. Saying I'm sorry is our version of repentance, okay? And, and saying you're sorry is not repentance. That's sorrow. That's why it's called sorry, sorrow. You know, it comes from the same word. Repentance is actually a changing of course. It's an aligning oneself. It, it, it literally means to turn away or to, to reposition oneself. And so repentance, when Jesus said, you know, repent, and be baptized. When, when John the Baptist is telling everybody, repent and be baptized, when we're talking about repentance, they were actually saying, turn away from the direction you've been going and align yourself with the plan I have for you. That's what he's telling us. He's not just saying, feel bad for what you used to do. Now, sometimes there are some things that we do feel bad about. There's some things that we, that we have to let go of. I, I wasn't sure if the person who was going to be chosen would have like anything in their hair she doesn't, so she doesn't have to take it out. But if she had stuff in her hair, she'd have to take it out. If she had a, a thick, poofy coat on, she'd have to take it off. There's things that we're going to have to let go of. But most importantly, it's not about what you're letting go of. It's about what you're aligning with. You see, the, the, the funny thing about repentance is what you're turning away from doesn't matter. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying sin doesn't matter, but it's irrelevant what you're turning away from. What's relevant is what you're turning towards. You see, you could turn away from anything, but if you don't turn towards the kingdom, if you don't toward, turn towards saying yes to the one who called you, it, it doesn't matter. You're just going to turn to something else. So when we repent and respond to the Lord, we're turning towards Him. And, and again, there is a recognition, to be honest, and I want to be, be completely like, clear about this, all of us have things that are sin, the, the, the negative things we're going to turn away from, okay? And when you come into relationship with a holy God, it becomes really abundantly clear. Like, the, the, the nicest, greatest, non-believing person that you know come into the presence of a holy God, you're going to find out that they are very humbled, very repentant, and have, and, and have a, a confession on their lips, because every time that we come into the presence of a holy God, it shows us our unholiness. Okay, so here we have the prophet Isaiah. You look fabulous. <laughs> She's not the prophet Isaiah, by the way. We have the prophet Isaiah the, in the previous verses when he meets the Lord. And, and I'm not going to read all of it because we do have a short time this morning. But verse 5 says this, Then I said, it's all over. He's literally, when he meets God, he's like, it's done. I'm toast. Because the presence of a holy God overwhelms him. Is that warm? Not yet. Okay, it will be. Okay. He says, then it's, I said, it's all over. I'm doomed, for I am a sinful man. You know, last week we talked about Peter, and when, when, when he realized like, that Jesus was the Messiah, not just a normal rabbi, not just a teacher, not just, he was like, this is the Messiah in my presence. What did he say? He said, get away from me, I'm a sinful man right? That's what he said. He said, get away from me. He's like, I got, I got to get out of here. I'm, I'm mortal. I'm, I'm dirty. The Bible says our righteousness, our best, like the best you can put on, 
Your best day is like a filthy rag. It's like garbage before God. And, and that's, that's really humbling because some of us think we're pretty good. And, and to be fair, some, you're some really nice people out there. But the reality is, is all of us are sinful. And when Isaiah, who I don't think was some rotten scoundrel, okay? We have no reason to believe based on scripture, based on, on history, that Isaiah was a scoundrel. But when he, here he is, a man of God, representing God's people, comes before a holy God, he says, it's all over. I'm doomed because I'm a sinful man. I have filthy lips and I live among people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord of heaven's armies. Isaiah meets a pre-incarnate Jesus and he's like, I, I, I'm just... It's like when Jesus was, was revealed to the, the, his, the, the closer disciples on the mountaintop and it says that, that, that He shone like the sun and, the, and that they fell down and they worshipped Him. That is what happens when an unholy people, a, a, a carnal people come into the presence of a holy God. And when we do, there will be a repentance that becomes in our spirit. There's, there's something overwhelming. And, and, and when I've talked to a lot of um, um, emergency workers, is it getting warm yet? Not yet work, a lot of them can point to a time where they saw a life saved. And there was something that, that just inspired them. And from that point on, they wanted to see life saved. Um, we're going to move forward. I don't want to belabor this. There's also something really cool that when he aligns himself, when he has that repentant heart, I want to, I want to point out what God does really quick. Verses 6 and 7 says this, Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal that he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with it and said, See, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. Now this is a symbolic of, of the removal of his sins. I don't, I, don't, I don't honestly believe that the prophet Isaiah had his lips burned off, okay? This is something that's part of his vision of, of how it was God's holiness. Because what lit the fire of the, the altar of God was, was God's presence. You guys remember that any time God really wanted to show that He was the God of Israel, He would say, don't light the fire, let me. Right? <laughs> he was like, you don't have to worry about it, just get it ready and step back. Because the presence and the power of God would light the fire. He would light it. The Bible says that our God is a consuming fire. And so I want to encourage you that when you agree, when you agree, that's what he's looking again for. He's looking for us to make a decision. He's looking for us to have a repentant or turning towards him and away from whatever, whatever heart, that when you do that, it's his holiness that makes us right. It's not even the action of what you did. You're just saying yes to him and then he's doing it. He's the one that's doing it. So, so cool. All right. Got to hurry here. So response requires commitment. This is where we're, we're talking about commitment because she's still standing. You're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. Is it getting hot yet? She is so good at this. Now I'm almost wishing I had the sweater in there. Okay. No. I am wearing a sweater. You are. That's true. She is wearing a sweater. So the commitment. When I said I wanted, I actually went around between the, during the break time and I asked a couple kids if they were willing to, and they were like, mm, no thanks. I knew that there would be some who would be, but some of them I'm not so sure that they wouldn't be like trying to run around and you know, play fireman. Um, we do have a lot of water here, and you guys could be getting wet if we put the wrong kid in the suit. They'd be like, I'm helping you! Um, but response requires commitment. I think it's really important to realize that, and, and Jesus brought this out all through his ministry on earth, was that he wasn't looking for people just to say yes, he was looking for people who meant yes. It's a commitment. We're going to do a baptism here in just, in just a few minutes. And we, we believe that baptism doesn't save you. The water, I always ask people who are getting baptized, what does the water do? It's fun to listen to what they answer. And then when they're all done with whatever they're going to say, I go, it gets you wet. That's what it does. And they're like, oh. And I'm like, yes, the water gets you wet. That's, that's all the water actually does. Because the water in the baptism, it's not, it's not special water. It's tap water out of the well. Um, we did warm it up, so <laughs> that helps. But it's, it's a commitment 
that you're making. You're making a commitment. You're making a testimony. You're making a, you're enrolling. Now, if, if she's not totally put off by this experience of wearing the suit, there could come a day where she's like, I really want to wear one for real. I want to, I want to pursue a career. It might actually fit you better, um, the one they give you. But, but there's, no, there's going to be a point where it has to be, she's not, you're not going to get a suit by thinking you want to be a firefighter. You're going to have to make a commitment. You're going to have to make a commitment. You're going to have to say, I'm going to dedicate myself to training. I'm going to dedicate myself to following the directives. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, associate myself. You're going to, you're going to, it's going to change your schedule. It's going to change how you eat, how you think, how you, um, what you can do. A lot of firefighters are on call a lot of times. They're like, even on their time off, they can't leave a certain area. They have to live within a certain distance. It really, really speaks to your whole life. And so does following Christ. Following Christ, you know, we're going to baptize people, like I said, but that's one step. That's one step in a, in, in a life of saying yes. Yes, I'll live where you tell me to live. Yes, I'll do what you tell me to do. Yes, yes, yes. I commit my yes. So I'm going to reread um, the the verse, our, our key passage, Ephesians 5, but I'm just going to read verse 8. It says this, um, For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord, so live as people of light. I, I, the, the phrase I wanted to focus in on there was, so live. This is, a, this is a continuation statement. It's not like, okay, so good for you, now you're in. He, it's, it, it's, it's like, okay, you have the light of the Lord, now live as people of light. You got the suit on. If it was really your graduation and everything, and you'd already done training, it'd be like, great, you went through training, now live like a firefighter. That's going to mean this and this and this, and then you're going to get a new new schedule, and it's going to mean this and this, and then they're going to make changes in the department, and it's going to mean, it's a commitment. It's a commitment. And the very last point, and this one's going to be a little bit fun. I'm going to walk with you down the stairs so that you don't fall. I just don't want those big boots to... All right, I'm going to have you do a lap around the room so all the kids can get a little closer look. So just kind of weave your way around. You can go this way and then come back up the same way you went down. So go that way. Yeah, there you go. All the way around. Thank you. There you go. So... Response requires action. So one of the things about like, okay, you, went, you, you signed up, you made a decision, made a commitment, you went to training, you said, I'm willing to make this my lifestyle, but there's still something really important to take place when the, set, when the alarm goes off. Is when the alarm goes off, you got to go. And you go where the call tells you to go. Come on back up. Can we give her a big hand? And I want to encourage you when we, when we read this is because often this is the part where we almost kind of choke a little bit because some of us are like, there used to be this song in the 80s Lord, don't send me to Africa. Did anybody else hear that song in the 80s? Okay. A few of you are, are nodding. Your, this, Lord, don't send me to Africa. Da, 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 da. And it was all about send me anywhere else but Africa. And because that was just a, a popular thought in, the, in Christianity at the time is that if you were really called by God, you'd get sent to Africa. Um, which we actually knew a few people who did. And we were like, oh, you didn't sing the song right. <laughs> you know, you messed up. Um, but there's this thing in us that, that like is a little bit worried. Like, we're, we're pretty, like, especially when we first come to Christ, we're, like, pretty excited about Him, like, changing our lives. Man, I want free from addiction. I want, I want, you know, victory in my life. I want my family. I want my family to pull together. I want God's work in my home. Man, this feels good. And we start moving towards that, and God's teaching us things, and we're getting rid of, you know, all that foul stuff that, that used to be part of our lives, and God's changing us, and things are going great. And then it gets to that part where the, where the alarm goes off, ding, 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 and we go down the pole, and we're like, 
you were just a little bit like, we're kind of squeaking down the pole. Because we're just nervous about what's going to, what's you know, what's, where are we going, right? And here's the coolest thing. Is the, the second verse in that, in that Ephesians passage says this, for this light within you will produce what is good and right and true. He will produce what is needed for where He's sending you. He is the one who will accomplish the good things. Every good work that He has for us in Christ Jesus, which is also in Ephesians, is a work that He does in us when we do this, this, this process of saying yes Yes, yes to decision, commitment. What was the third one? Come on, come on. Repentance and action. Thank you. Yeah. So, sorry, little, 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 uh, little, little gap in the not so young mind there. He's the one. That's the whole point, though. It's him. It's him from the beginning who called us. It's him who gives us something to repent and turn to. It's Him who trains us up and clothes us in His righteousness and in His armor, the armor of God. Come on, we could do a whole series on the armor of God, but she would sweat it out, okay? Right? It's Him who trains us and equips us for every good work in Christ Jesus. And it's Him who sends us where we're going. And it's Him who will accomplish His will for His glory and His kingdom. Come on, it's Him. It's Jesus. And so what we're really doing is we are, this is, this is becoming a disciple. This is the literal alignment with Him for Him to do what He desires in the world where we live. And so if you've reached that point or if you're moving towards that point, young people, don't be afraid about where God's going to send you. Don't be afraid that you're not going to make enough money. I know a couple different people and I'm not... And, 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 and their stories are, are completely opposite. One was willing to go wherever God sent him, and one decided not to because he didn't feel like it suited him. And I can tell you that the second has many regrets. He has many regrets. Guys, don't worry about like, oh, well, what about this? What about that? You can trust our Lord and Savior. You can trust Him. If He was willing to lay down the glory of heaven and to take upon Him the shame of the cross, you can trust Him. Amen? All right, let's give our firefighter one more big hand. All right, and you can actually step over there and gear down. Gear down, and let's give our real firefighter one more big hand. While they're gearing down, I want, I'd like the worship team to come up. I'm going to give you your real shoes back. See, she did have one thing she actually had to get rid of there. I, I knew it. even a really nice person like her had something to get rid of, All right? Um, so I just want to, I want to read this verse. The worship team's coming up. They're going to do a song, and then we're going to baptize a couple people, okay? This is going to be awesome. But this is what it says. It, it's from Isaiah again. I just want to finish up that passage. Um, it says, verse 8 and verse not the beginning of verse 9, it says, Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom shall I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? I said, Here am I. Send me. And he said, Yes. Go and say to this people. And you can read the rest of the passage, but the important part for this morning is that God called. Isaiah said yes. God said go.